All right, last one for the review. Starting on number 43, the square of a number. The square of a number is x squared plus 7 times the number, 7x, is negative 10. That's pretty straightforward. Remember, our goal for any quadratic formula, or x squared, is different than our goal for any uh, <clears throat> linear equation. If you have x plus 2 equals 5, that's a linear equation. That's 1x. Our goal is to get our x on one side and all the constant terms or, or um, numbers on the other side. So you get x equals 3 is an answer. Okay, this um, That's for linear. For quadratic, um, you have two x's. Our goal for that would to make sure that you have all of the terms on one side so you can factor. So you want to set all the terms to equal to zero and you want to have a positive x squared, whatever it takes to do that. Okay, so this one, x squared plus 7x equals negative 10. That negative 10 needs to be moved over to the other side. So I can then factor, this is an easy factor, as in it has a positive positive, therefore it's positive positive in my answer. Don't forget to have these down. Um, and then factors of 10, factors of 10, two numbers that multiply to get a 10 that will add to get a seven. That's two and five. Then when it says find the numbers, you must solve. Oh. Did I forget to find the number? I forgot to find the number for 42. So if you have x minus 1, you want to set that to equal to 0. Add 1, add 1, x equals 1. Whoops, that's the number. Find the number. Here's the number. The number is 1. I stopped here, which probably was a bad idea. Uh, I would have lost partial credit on that one. So when it says... Um, I don't, I think the, well, I know the instructions on the final are much more detailed, so make sure you're following. Does it say it just wants an equation? Does it say it just wants you to factor, or does it want you to solve for x? So if you're factoring, and then you need to solve for x, make sure you set, follow the zero product rule, and set your factors to equal zero. So here, I'm here, and then he, I set each factor to equal to zero. x plus 2 is a factor. Okay, x plus 5 is another factor because they are multiplied together. Factors are items that are multiplied together. Okay, so we set each one to 0, and then we solve the linear equation that we have now, 4x, and we have two answers. x could be a negative 2 or a negative 5. That's what would make this original equation true. Let's check that for a minute. If you have x squared plus 7x equals negative 10, and I'm saying that one of the answers that is possible is a negative 2. So that would be a negative 2 squared plus 7 times a negative 2. And that all better equal negative 10, or I did something wrong. So negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. 7 times a negative 2 is a negative 14. That's going to give me a negative 10. So I'm good. Okay? Get some room here for the next one. All right, greatest common factor. We look at 28, 12, and 8. These are all multiples of 4. Um, in other words, a 4 would go evenly into them. Would They're divisible by 4 evenly, so we need to take that out. Um, how do we know that it was 4? Let's say um, the divisibility test for 2 uh, is that they're all even. That means the last digit is even. So 8, 2, and 8, they're even. So you know a 2 comes out. So you could take a 2 out, and then they'd still be even. So you knew to take another 2 out. So that'd be 4 for the greatest common factor. Okay? And then it just wants to know what that is. And then all of them have an x term. I mean, a, a variable in them. There are variable terms. So they have at least an x squared in each of them. So we need to take the x squared out. So both of those things together are the common factors, okay? All right, this is a four-term. Number 45 is a four-term polynomial. We factor those by dividing them in half between 
the second term and this don't forget that this um, sign goes with this second half here okay and we just to we get the greatest common factor out of the front half in this case was a y and we put what's left there so remember this has to be able to foil uh, distribute back to get to what you had okay so we know that this has to be the same as this over here so we just write it down over here and how do we go from a negative 5 to a 1 well we divide by a negative 5 so the greatest common factor of this half is a negative 5 okay and then we get this left and these two terms have a common factor of an x minus or an x plus 7 so we take that out and then what's left goes in its own parentheses so that's factored completely okay all right then we have um what do we have we have a quadratic equation that's set to zero that means we're going to be solving for the answer so that means we have to it's it's in the proper order with a zero equal to zero on one side to start factoring and we call it the easy factoring because there is a one in front of the y okay so that means we can go straight to our answer we do the setup put these parentheses in put the y's in okay and then we notice that it's a negative and a negative so we know that there's one negative and one positive in my answer then I try to find the factors of 28 the factors of 28 let's think of them first 1 and 28 2 and what 14 is there a 3 what's the divisibility test for 3 um, <clears throat> 2 plus 8 is 10 10 is not divisible by 3 you can always make a factor tree this is even so no there's no 3 okay how about a 4 yeah there's a 4 because 2 times there's two twos so 4 into 28 is 7 times and anything else I think that's all the different combinations of twos and sevens that we can have all right so because my final answer is going to be a negative and a positive I need um, two factors that are three apart so that would be these and I need it to equal a negative three so that means the seven has to be negative and the four has to be positive so I need to put the seven here and the four here all right, and then it said I needed to solve because it has an equal sign here, not just factor. So I need to set each factor to equal to zero and properly solve the linear equation we have there to get your final answer of y equals those. Okay, factor the following expression. It's an expression because it doesn't have an equal sign that means when we get done we're not going to be solving it we just need to factor it um, we don't know how to solve things uh, factor things that have a uh, terms that have a three as an exponent so we want to look to see if we can take something out for a GCF and we can take a Y out make that a two and then we can also take out the four my eye goes to the smallest number and see if the whole thing will come out of all of them and it does you want to do that so you're not factoring with too large a number so take the 4y out and save that that has to be part of your answer then what's left you have to see what's left so you know what you're factoring then I need factors of 28 um, that are three apart again is it the same one I just did that is the same one I just did so I'm good probably didn't know that <laughs> um, all right next one 48 let's see this is a little harder one to factor because the number in front of the x isn't a one so the ac method this is a b c the ac method says a times c equals 12 and then factors of 12 that are going to equal b which is 7. so 3 times 4 is 12 and then factors of 12 3 and 4 equal 7. so that one's not that hard and you're going to why do we do that because we're turning b into two different terms a 3x and a 4x and those are our new b terms those two numbers here including their signs should go back to whatever b is okay we did that so we get a four term so we can divide it in half and take the gcf out of the front 
which is a three and an X. Don't forget to take that three. You should be left with something that when you distribute back gets that front half, but there shouldn't be any common factors in what's left. All right, and then we looked at the back, took out a four. So that makes that our final answer for that one. Um, here's a trinomial with big numbers. Um, no GCF because 25 is five and five, 36 is six and six, so that's not gonna work. What else can we think of? Well, 25 is a perfect square and so is 36. So we root them. So the root of 25y squared is 5y. First, first, the root of the last, 6 and 6. And then we check our signs. If the first one is negative and the second one's positive, then they're both negative. And we can write our answer like that. And we don't have to solve because there's no equal to 0 there. Okay? Um, the next one is two terms. It's a perfect square minus a perfect square. So that's supposed to be, what is W equal? And um, so that means we take the root of the first term, put it here and here, root of the second term, put it here and here, and then the signs have to be opposite to make that middle term disappear. It doesn't have three terms, okay? Now, it is also set to zero, so we need to set each to equal to zero, each factor to equal zero, so we can solve and get our final answer, okay? Uh, 51, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I know I have to distribute. Let's do that. That's going to give me a squared number, which is a quadratic, which means I need to get everything on one side so I can have a zero, and I need this square to be positive. So we're gonna move both terms to the other side. They're not like, let's see, those are like terms, but that negative two is not. So don't add that. Remember, we're trying to go here equal to zero. So we're ready to factor. There's a number more than one in front of my y squared. So it's a hard, harder one. So I'm gonna use the AC method to do that. So six, the A times C, six times negative two is negative 12. Factors of negative 12 that are one apart. There's a one right there, right? So that would be four and three are one apart. And the four has to be the larger, has to be the negative because I need a leftover negative. So that's a, put them in as my new B terms, divide them in half, pull out my GCF. Don't forget this one right here. You need that. So when you take out the GCF, you can put two X plus one, okay? And then because it was an equation, we don't forget that, that it's still equal to zero. You set each factor to equal to zero. And when you run them, you're gonna get some fractions. That's fine, just stay with it. And those are your two answers to those. Uh, the sum of three consecutive numbers is 372. All right, I think, um, <sighs> We need to do these the way they want us to do these. You have to represent the three consecutive numbers in terms of a variable and put them in an equation. That's the way you have to do this, okay? So the sum, that means we're, we're adding three things together. One, two, three. The sum of three consecutive numbers, three numbers in a row that are gonna add up to 372. So x is the first number. You should write that somewhere. x plus one is the second number. That, this factor here represents the second number. x, plus, uh, I don't think you call it a factor, this um, binomial. And this represents the third number, okay? So if you had two plus three plus four, that's going to add to nine okay these are three consecutive numbers that add to nine this is my x this would be x plus one two plus one is three x plus two is this would be, if so if x was two this is two plus two which would be four okay and then two plus three plus four is nine that's how we work these so once we get that far, we've given our equation, which is required, okay? 
Then you're going to kind of ignore the parentheses because these are all addition. So I have one X here, one X here, and another one X here, which makes three X's. Then I have a positive one and then the positive two, which is a positive three equals 372. So I combine like terms. Then I want to move that positive three to the other side. Constants all on one side because it's a linear equation. So 3x equals 369, all right? To get the x alone, divide both sides by three and you get x, okay? That means the first of the three numbers, the three consecutive numbers is 123. If you add one, you get three 124. You add two to 123, you get 125, okay? Now, this last page looks a little intimidating. Um, these are vocabulary words that you learned over the year. Um, trying to internalize some terminology involves writing a definition in your own words. That can be very helpful, okay? If you can't quite come up with it, the important part is to at least be able to recognize and create uh, examples of your own. So by no means is this a complete list of all the different things. I mean, look at an improper fraction. There are an infinite number of more improper fractions, but the key is that the top number, the new, um, numerator is larger than the denominator. So anything you make up where the number on top is bigger than the number on the bottom that isn't reducible, okay? You can't write eight over four because that's a two but you could write eight over five because it doesn't reduce, okay? As long as an improper fraction is uh, as your final, okay? Um, mathematical expressions versus equations. Equations have an equal sign. Um, you know what an exponent is? It's a little hard to say what an exponent is. Um, so I've written some of these down. I got them out of the book. Some of them I really just made up. So I was trying to put it in common language. Um, perimeter. That one I got out of the book. A continuous line forming a boundary of a... Um, this. A continuous line forming a boundary. Okay, this is my example of a perimeter, of a perimeter as a formula because it's a rectangle. There are many other perimeter formulas. Basically, um, add up all sides works all the time. So that way, if you have like a tri sorry, you cannot read that. Add up all sides. So if you have a triangle, you would add up all the sides to get its perimeter. Okay, I just happen to pull the example of a rectangle. Okay. Perpendicular lines, we talked about them. Proper fractions, proper fractions, one half. That means the number on top is smaller than the number underneath. The, the let's see, technical terms, the numerator is less than the denominator. Okay, slope, slope formula, y-intercept, variable, greatest common factor, least common multiple. I think they're pretty explanatory, so just look through those, please. Good luck on the final.